This is a bipartisan group that will perform a nonpartisan service. It's a, indeed a great honor to serve as vice chairman of this commission. Uh, the charge of the commission is a significant one, uh, as the president outlined, to study the threats to the integrity of our elections, to quantify those threats if possible, and if it's the will of the commission to offer recommendations to the president to help ensure the integrity of future elections in this country. Uh, and most importantly, to share that information uh, after the report is made to the president, to share that information with the American public. Uh, this is a, a mission of the highest order. I've often thought that at the very foundation of our republic are really two bedrock things, the American Constitution and the uh, faith and reality that our elections are conducted fairly. If you take away either of those two things, I believe that our republic cannot stand for long. So for a long time, there's been lingering doubt among many Americans uh, about the integrity and fairness of elections, and it's not a new issue at all. Um, if you look at the polling data, it goes back decades. Uh, public opinion has been consistent on this in that there is a substantial number of people who wonder if our elections are fair. A 2014 survey showed that only 40% of voters thought elections were fair to the voters, which indicates that 60% uh, uh, either did not think so or were, were undecided. Um, we owe it to the American people to take a hard, dispassionate look at the subject. And throughout our country's history, there have been specific historical episodes that we, we may have learned of in school or in college of, of voter fraud, and those may have received a great deal of attention. And uh, individual states from time to time may have investigated specific allegations of voter fraud or have done some specific investigation of voter fraud. Uh, for example, in my state of Kansas, we're engaged in litigation right now defending our proof of citizenship requirements at the time of registration. And we've engaged in extensive fact-finding for the federal courts involved and have discovered 128 specific cases of non-citizens who either registered to vote or attempted to register to vote. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. One expert in the case uh, estimated that the total number could be in excess of 18,000 uh, on our voter rolls. But there's never been a nationwide effort to do some sort of analysis of this scope and scale, to quantify and analyze the various forms of threats to our uh, elections integrity. This commission's will, commission will have the ability to find answers to questions that have never been fully answered before and to conduct research that has never been conducted before. And that research will not be buried. We respect the voters' privacy and will not identify individual voters with our voter roll data, but we will lay, lay out factual findings and systematic problems that we can identify in our electoral systems. And those results, whatever they are, uh, will be made public for the American people <coughs> to draw their own conclusions from. In 2013, President Obama established a Presidential Commission on Election Administration, and he did so, among other things, to analyze uh, a problem that had been reported in several states in the 2012 election, and that was long lines at the polling places. When someone drives to a polling place and sees a long line two blocks long, there's a chance that that person may decide it's not worth it for me to vote and turn around and drive home. Similarly, if someone lives in a place where voter fraud has been known to occur in the past and the elections in the past may have been stolen, there's a chance that he or she will decide that his vote is not likely to count or it will be, out of, it will be uh, counterbalanced by the fraud and therefore decide not to vote in that case. These are both problems worthy of investigation and worthy of a presidential commission. In Kansas, for the last 11 years, we've hosted the interstate cross-check system in which approximately 30 states participate. We annually compare our voter rolls to each other, and in so doing, we find literally millions of people that are probable double registrations, where the same person is registered in more than one state. With that information, the participating states can begin the process of keeping their voter rolls accurate and up-to-date. It's a starting point where the state can then contact the voters in question and with the voters' consent, remove them from the voter rolls of the state that was he, in which he no longer resides or else using a, a process laid out by the National Voter Registration Act. The program also develops leads where it appears that the same person may have actually voted twice in the same election in two different jurisdictions. After further investigation, a prosecution for double voting may be appropriate. This program, in Kansas, hosted by Kansas and in 30 states, illustrates how a successful multi-state effort can be in enhancing the integrity of our elections and in keeping our voter rolls accurate. I'm confident that this commission will be equally successful on the national level. The talent, experience, and expertise of my fellow members of the commission is truly impressive. Thank you all for giving your time and your energy to this endeavor. I'm really looking forward to beginning our work together. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you for your opening remarks, and thank you for uh, uh, your leadership 
on this commission. We look forward very much to working with you.